Hello, and welcome to the Crime Writers Association's new video series, Crime Writers Only Influences. In this series, some of your favourite crime writers are going to tell you what books, or television programs or films that they read and watched when they were children or young people had had some kind of influence on them today and what they write. I'm going to start us off. My name's Fiona Veach Smith and I'm the author of the Poppy Denby Investigate series. Um, murder mystery set in the 1920s about a reporter sleuth in uh, London. Now, when I first started writing Poppy Denby, I didn't realise that the books I'd read as a child have actually influenced what I've written until I started getting reviews on Amazon and other places in which the readers were saying how much they enjoyed the books and said things like, it's like Nancy Drew all grown up. And I never thought about that before, but Nancy Drew was my favourite detective when I was a child. I grew up in a, a little village called Corbridge in Northumberland, which is in the northeast of England, in the 1970s. And when I was there, my parents weren't big readers and we didn't have uh, many books around the house. We had a dictionary, which my dad used to do the crossword on a weekend, and we had a big book of Grimm's fairy tales that he used to read to me and my brother at night. But beyond that, we didn't actually have books in the house. But he made sure that I had a library card and I spent as much time as I could at the Corbridge Village Library, which was a small library but had such treasures in it, or so I thought at the time. And there was one bookcase, not a bookshelf, a bookcase that was for children's books. And on there I found the Famous Five and the Secret Seven and the Hardy Boys and Swallows and Amazon and all sorts of adventure stories. But the thing that caught my attention the most, and which I loved the most, were the Nancy Drew books. Now, The Secret of the Clock was the very first Nancy Drew that I read, and my goodness, I thought she was so glamorous. She was uh, a teenager, and she lived in California, so there was sunshine all the time, unlike in Corbridge in Northumberland, I can tell you that. And she zooted around in a little blue convertible, solving mysteries. And I thought she was the most glamorous creature I'd ever laid my eyes on. And I loved reading the Nancy Drew books. And it was only in later years that I discovered that Nancy Drew was actually written by a number of different people. And it first started in 1929 when... Uh, a woman with the pen name of Carolyn Keane wrote the very first uh, Secret of the Clock and it was published in 1930. They became so popular that uh, some years later in 1959 they were rewritten yet again by another author and brought up to date and this isn't the original uh, book from 1959 but it's a reproduction of the cover. And the, the original 1929-1930 ones uh, was considered quite dated, particularly in its uh, usage of language around race. Even in 1959, they found things that were a little bit problematic in the, in the earlier books. And so they were updated. Um, Nancy herself gained two years. She was no longer 16. She became 18 and uh, slightly more glamorous yet again. And by the time I got to Nancy Drew, uh, there had been another reprint and rewrite, and that was in 1977. And unfortunately, my 1977 books have uh, been lost, and I'm, I'm still searching second-hand bookshops for them. So if any viewers actually have any of those 1977 books, uh, please let me know. I'd love to, to get hold of them again. So how has Nancy influenced my writing? Well, Nancy is not a lone wolf. She's very collegiate. She has friends and she has a family and together they investigate mysteries. And my Poppy Denby is very similar to that. She's a, she's a journalist. She's not just a girl detective. She's a young woman in her 20s. But she lives with her, her aunt, who's a former suffragette, and her aunt's companion, a woman called Grace Wilson. And they, uh, they, help, uh, they help Poppy a lot. She also has her uh, editor, Rolla Rollinson, who's her mentor. She has her best friend, who's a jazz club singer and dancer, Delilah Marconi. And she also has a love interest, a photographer called Daniel Rokeby. Now, Nancy herself, 
she had a love interest called Ned, who I swooned over at the time. And Ned, uh, there were children's books, so there was never actually any, uh, there was nothing, there wasn't even a kiss in there, but there was always a little frisson of, of romance. And my Daniel, I see, plays the same function as Ned in those books, although Poppy and Daniel's relationship is a lot more off and on, and Poppy worries that if she's to, to marry Daniel, whether it might be the end of her crime fighting career, and in fact, for that matter, her journalism career as well. So there's a tension between her desire for, for settling down and love and domesticity in a way, but also the adventure that she craves and loves. So, Nancy Drew in 2020. Is she still going? Well, she is. My daughter, who is uh, 15 years old, she started reading the Nancy Drew books when she was about 10. Now, this was republished in 2005, the year that she was born. She's now 15 and she's just a little bit too sophisticated and cool for Nancy Drew. But when she read these books between 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, she absolutely loved them just as much as I did. And Nancy, again, has been brought up to, or then it was 1995, but brought up almost to the 21st century. And before Harry Potter, The Secret of the Clock was the best-selling children's hardback of all time. It sold 2.7 million copies by the year 2001. So if you don't know Nancy Drew, please dip into her and enjoy her adventures. Be prepared, of course, they were written for a particular time if you're reading the older books, but they're, they're treasures that I, I love and I'm so glad I found Nancy when I was a child and she's been an influence on Poppy ever since. Thank you for watching. I hope that you perhaps dig out some of your old childhood books and have a read again. Thank you. Bye-bye.